One of the um, useful applications of integrals is to find the area under the curve. And oftentimes this area represents something uh, of, of a quantity, a totaling. So if you're having a velocity, like this is the graph of speed over time, the area would be the velocity times the time, which, so if you could find that area, you get the total distance. So it's valuable to find that area. Um, the problem is that it's not, a, it's not a bunch of shapes that we know. And so one of the ways that we will do this is to start out by looking at um, estimating the area. So we can put rectangles here. And rectangles are fairly basic uh, shapes. And so you have... This is a 1 by 2 rectangle, so that area would be 2. This is a 1 by 3, that's 3, 4, and 5. So we'd estimate that area to be 14 from 0 to 4. But you can see we have some overlap and some extra, and so it's not necessarily the best method. So right here we have extra little space, and then... We have some space in there where we're short. We do have some overlap. So, I mean, on this one, the extra and the amount we're short kind of even itself out. Um, and depending on how many rectangles you put, that gets more accurate. For this uh, one up on the right here, uh, it's not clear where to put your rectangle right here. So, I mean, you kind of have to either decide to go below or go above. Um, and so, if you're trying to follow a uniform pattern for rectangles, you can see that's an overestimate. Um, and, there, and there would be an underestimate, depending on where else you drew them. And if you draw, if you said I only want to draw about three rectangles, well then your area is not as accurate. But, this method of sketching in these uh, rectangles is called uh, the method of exhaustion and Archimedes down here he used this method to come up with formulas for polygons many of which you learn in geometry um, by just filling the shapes in with other shapes that we already knew and adding them up um, using limits with calculus we can make these rectangles really small. Small enough that the width of the rectangle is approaching zero and the height of the rectangle is the function and what we end up doing is getting basically the exact area. And so this is a valuable uh, tool with calculus and using integrals is we can get the exact area from one point to another if you can map a function. That's where uh, being able to model um, real life situations with functions allows you to do a lot of things. allows you on the last trimester allows us to do slope and derivatives and this trimester allows us to do um, area. And so we always start out uh, this process um, with uh, the approximations and so I'm going to show you a few of those uh, there's a special term here I'm going to pull up a different picture just a second there's a specific method um, called a Riemann sum that kind of gives you some structure to how to just set these rectangles and so we, we need, all we need is a basic table. Usually often these problems on the AP exam are just a table like this. Probably a horizontal table. I just wrote it that way so that we can have a more room here. And basically the, there's two kinds of uh, Riemann sums. One is a left and one is a right. Occasionally you'll see midpoint. Um, usually left and right. And so they will always tell you in a Riemann sum how many intervals there are. And basically, that means how many rectangles are we making. 
And so for this one, we're going to say n equals 3. And, and these are actually the, the counting numbers here. So you'll see another formula sometimes that says b minus a over n. And that's just saying, what is the length of our interval? 3 from 3 to 0 divided by 3. That tells me the width of my rectangles is 1. So if you have a width of 1, then you that's what you're going to use to draw your rectangles. And so we're not doing infinitely small rectangles. We're doing big old sloppy rectangles right now. And then we will adjust from there. Um, so I'm going to try to draw them with this rectangle tool here. So if it's a left Riemann sum, you're going to make three rectangles. You use the left point on the function to make your rectangle. And the widths are all one, so the height are just going to be the function values. So the area using a left Riemann sum would be 2 times 1 plus 2.5 times 1 plus 4 times 1. So the other way that you can note that 2, 2.5, 4, we're using the first three values. So you'd add those up and that would be giving your, your uh, left Riemann sum. And that would be what, 4.5, 8.5. That's our left Riemann sum. We use the leftmost endpoints. So if we're doing, uh, I'm not going to be able to erase that. Okay, if we're going to do a right Riemann sum, I'm going to just clear this these little rectangles off here. I'm losing everything because I am probably don't know what I'm doing. Um, put a rectangle back in here. A right Riemann sum, everything is the same. The widths of the rectangles are the same. The difference is you start with the right endpoint to make your rectangle. So this is obviously going to be an overestimate. So this one is definitely an overestimate. And the area here, there's some similarities. Still with one, only this time our heights are going to come from the three endpoints on the right. So the first one would be 6.5 by 1. The second one would be 4 by 1. And so there's some overlap. And the third one would be 2.5 by 1. So there's definitely some overlap in the area there. So that's 10.5, 13. So the right Riemann sum has an area of 13. And you can get these values from a table they give you, a table in your calculator. You can just look at the y values. But knowing that a left Riemann sum means we're using the left height, I'll put those up in a different color here. Try anyway. That didn't work. So the left, using the left end points. And if you notice, there is some overlap. Uh, two of the rectangles are the same. I don't know if you can see that right here. This rectangle and this one are the same. When they show up in the same calculation. And this green rectangle and this yellow one are the same. So left Riemann sum, right Riemann sum. If they ask about a midpoint Riemann sum, you'd need to add more table values. And they'd still be a width 1, but the 
function values would come from here. And the, and the midpoint is going to be more accurate because it's kind of like averaging the two. It's not always an average, um, but it's somewhere in between there. Uh, one of the questions they like to ask is whether or not you have an overestimate or underestimate of area. And so uh, you can tell that if you have increasing functions and you do a left Riemann sum, you're always starting on the function, you know it's underestimate. I always like to make a picture and just analyze it that way. If we were doing a right Riemann sum for the same interval, we would have started at the, at the right endpoint over and down. And then, you know, from there, there's some definitely some of the same overlap. So you can see as if you could average those two, you get a good gap in the middle. This is all estimating. And the more rectangles you make, is more accurate. And so, again, if you can make a ton of these little rectangles, you have reached the point of the exhaustion method, and then you're ready to uh, move on to finding that number uh, with a calculation instead of by drawing rectangles. Hopefully this was a helpful explanation of basic area under curve and Riemann sums.